let's move on to something else. It's not serious. It's not serious, and that's why we always lose. Instead of trying to <coughs> isolate Israel and say you are the only obstacle to a negotiated settlement, now people want to come along and say, we don't want that settlement either. That's exactly what Israel wants to hear. So now they can tell the world, it's not just us, it's them too, who don't want to settle the conflict. Remember, Israel tried to destroy the PLO, not when it called for one secular state, but when it went along with the international community. They tried to destroy Hamas, not when it was calling for one Islamic state in Palestine, but when it was coming out in favor of two states. What Israel dreads is a reasonable Palestinian interlocutor for peace. That's what it opposes. And that's when it does its best to uh, defeat those peace offenses. Thank, thank you very much for your talk. Um, just back to the topic of um, the U.S. backing of Israel, and uh, I have a few questions or a couple points on that. Um, would you say that you know when you talk about Israel as being a lunatic state, that the U.S. is sort of equally, if more, not more lunatic in its treatment of Palestine and its backing of Israel? And um, also you talked about that the U.S. doesn't have a vested interest in, it doesn't have a reason to oppose um, the two-state solution. Mm -hmm. So would opposing the two-state solution, um, would that weaken the U.S.'s power within Israel, the power sort of center within the Middle East? What would the U.S. motivation be? Because without the U.S., Israel doesn't have right. that power. So without the U.S., uh, what would the U.S. need in terms of motivation to actually support the two-state solution? And do you think that there's hope with Barack Obama? I heard an interview recently on CBC, and he was also interviewed by Amy Goodman and Democracy Now. I can't remember his name, but he's a Palestinian-American. Uh, yeah, and he thought that there was hope with Barack Obama that there would be a change in tone in terms of the very pro-Israel um, stance that Congress has taken. Do you see a hope with Obama? What 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 will it take for the U.S. to back off and to actually endorse this? Well, you know, there are two possibilities. One possibility is that people organize sufficiently that they can put pressure on their government to change its position. Uh, and that means uh, what you have to do in any situation to try to government to try to get the government to do what it doesn't want to do. In this case, it means countering the lobby. I think there are very real prospects here. If we get our act together, uh, we can become a formidable force to change policy because I think support for Israel has died. I mean, you see, everywhere I go, you can check YouTube. I always begin by saying, if you have dissent, you go first. And everywhere I go, the other side doesn't dare go to the microphone. Here you have one gentleman who I respect for showing that kind of courage. They don't go because they know they've lost on the facts. <coughs> They have no leg to stand on. And that should tell us something. If they're afraid to appear, afraid to question, afraid to show their face, it means that's their weakness. It's their vulnerability. And that's where we should work. So that's one possibility. And the other possibility is that ruling elites reach the conclusion that Israel is just becoming a uh, liability. At least some of its policies are becoming a liability. And it's 
time to force Israel to withdraw. You can't say with certainty that won't happen. Uh, it's possible that, you can't say it with certainty, it's possible that Barack Obama or his administration will reach the conclusion that maybe putting more pressure on Israel would serve the U.S. national interest, uh, that Israel's conduct has simply gotten out of hand. Now, I agree, let's be clear, as an American, as horrific as Israel's crimes are, they pale in comparison to what the U.S. does on each hour of each day in the world, and we should maintain proportions. If I say Israel's become a lunatic state, it's because aspects of it are simply hard to comprehend. So, for example, you go into a defenseless place, you flatten it, about 80% of the casualties, 80